Let's have a look at how we can model Airbnb business in Excel. So again, we are going back to Paul, which has some capital from selling his SaaS startup. And instead of hotels, he's also considering renting apartments and offering them on Airbnb or booking.com. So here he's not actually buying the apartments, but he's actually renting it from other people and subletting to people who want to spend their one night, one day. So what we know about him. So first of all, he's considering renting on average 10 apartments every year and he'll sublet the apartments on a daily basis, mainly via sites like Airbnb. He'll also take a small loan to cover for the capex he needs for each and every apartment. And what we will try to do in the next lectures is to help him estimate the profit in the next 12 years, how much cash he can generate from this business. So let's move on to Excel and see how we can model this sort of a business. So let's have a look at the Airbnb model. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called Airbnb. And here in the sheet master, you will find, a, as always, a table of content. We're going to start by looking at how we can model the single apartment. Then we will have a look at the head office cost, loan projection. And finally, as always, we'll try to model the whole chain of apartments. So let's have a look at how one apartment performs. So let's start with revenues. We estimate them in the very same manner we did it for the hotels. So we have number of nights sold and certain average daily rate. The nights sold depend on the number of rooms. We assume two rooms in this apartment that we rent separately. And then we have 360 days. We also have the occupancy rate, which grows from 60% to 85. After we multiply those three things, we get that in the first year, we will be renting the apartment for 432 days. And this grows to 612 days starting from year four. The average daily rate, it's just slightly increasing from 40 to 50 and later on stays on the roughly the same level. Cost of cleaning are estimated by looking at the number of nights sold and cost per night. In the very same manner, we estimate the cost of breakfast. So it depends on nights sold and cost per night. Now we may have some cost related to additional revenues. Since we don't have any additional revenue per one night, then this stays zero. In row 13, we estimate the booking fees. As you can see, we calculate it by looking at the revenues, then assuming what percentage of those revenues are generated by booking sites on which we have to pay the fee. And we assume that almost everything is generated by the site. And we have 7% fee that we have to pay them for bringing the revenues. On top of that, we have some transaction fees. We assume that there will be 1%. Thanks to that, we are able to estimate the variable costs. And this is what we've got in row 39. So it's 4,000 in the first year and it grows to 7,000 starting from year seven. The variable costs are all the costs we have mentioned so far. So cleaning, breakfast, costs related to additional revenues, booking fees and transactional fees. This enables us to estimate the gross margin after variable cost, which is the difference between the revenues and the variable costs. So the first year it's 13,000 per year and then it grows to 24,000. Fixed costs are estimated in a very simple manner. So they consist of three elements, renting from other people, then marketing activities and other costs. As we said, in this case, we assume that we're not going to be buying the apartment, but we're going to be renting it from other people. So here we simply have the monthly rate we have to pay and the number of months. We're going to be renting it for the whole year. And the monthly rate is estimated by looking at the cost per one square meter and having the size of, of the apartment in square meters. So we assume that we're going to be renting a small apartment equal to 45 square meters that will have two rooms. This enables us to estimate a beta on the apartment level in row 63. A beta will be calculated by deducting from the gross margin after variable cost, the fixed cost. And in this way, we get 2000 in, in the year one and it grows to 11,000 in the year four. As in the previous example, we also are able to estimate the percentage of beta. So it's growing from 10% to 37 in year number four. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss the investments and the cash flow related to this one apartment. We are still modeling the behavior of one apartment. Now we will look at the investment and the cash flow. So in row 71, we look at what kind of investment we have to make into the apartment. As you can see, it's relatively small. And this is due to the fact that we have to put something in the rooms. So there are two rooms and we have assumed certain costs per one room. For time being, it's $1,000. So in total, we will spend per one apartment 2000 
Now, we also may have some maintenance uh, investment, and this is equal to certain percentage of the initial investment, so the 2000. On top of that, if we are renting the apartment for a longer period of time, we may be forced to exchange the furniture. Therefore, we have the refurbishment and the renovation of rooms. This will depend on the number of rooms. Cost per one room assumed to be $1,000, and how often we do the renovation. We have assumed that we do it every six years. Therefore, as you can see, those 2000s appear every six years. So uh, during the 12 years, we'll have to refurbish twice the, the whole apartment. This enables us to calculate the total investment, which we do in row 85. And this is simply a sum of all the investments we have discussed so far. So investment in the apartment, in the initial one, then some maintenance investment, which is very small, and then uh, refurbishment and renovation of rooms. As you can see, due to the fact that it's not our apartment, actually the investment is not big. In some cases, we may have also inventory, but uh, in this case, we can skip it. So we get to the cash flow and this will consist of, of three things. So the beta that we are getting from renting, then the total investment that we have to make. Obviously, this will be a negative cash flow and inventory if it happens. As you can see, almost immediately the cash flows are positive. Already in the second year, we have a cash flow of 7,000 and then it goes up to 11,000 per year. In years where we do the refurbishment, like the year six, it will be obviously smaller due to the fact that we have to spend some money on new furniture. Now, the NPV we estimate in row 100 and it's 80,000 for the 12 years using obviously discounting rate. And internal rate of return is huge because there's hardly any investment. We also calculate the percentage EBITDA on the apartment level, similar to what we did in the case of the hotels. So it's 10% in the first year, and then it goes up to 37% starting from year four. So that's in short when it comes to modeling one apartment. So in summary, we started by looking at the revenues. Then we looked at the costs, which enabled us to estimate the variable costs gross margin after variable cost. And since we have certain uh, fixed costs, we were able to estimate the beta. Once we have the beta, we looked at the investments that we have to do in the apartment and we were able to estimate what kind of cash can one apartment generate. It's not big. However, if we rent sufficient number of cash flows, we can actually have a sustainable business. And this is what we're going to do in the next lectures. Now let's have a look at the head office costs that we will have to add to this business in order to be able to operate more than one apartment. Let's have a look at the head office costs. So please go to sheet HQ and here you see that we have estimated the cost of head office to be 19,000 in the first year and then they grow to more than half a million in year 12. The main element, obviously, it's the cost of people. And let's have a look how we have estimated that. So we have the following groups. So we have a CEO, managers, people that handle logistics, people that handle sales and marketing, and obviously design specialists that are preparing the apartment. And for each and every group, we did exactly the same thing. So we first try to estimate how many people, how many FTE we need, and what is the cost per one FTE. The cost per one FTE is simply the money we have to pay given what's now on the market. But more interesting is actually how we estimated the number of uh, people we need. So what we did was actually we took the number of apartments that we want to have in each in every year and we assumed certain ability of this person to handle specific number of apartments. So for example, in the case of managers, we know that we should have one person per every 60 apartments or in other words, one person on this position, on the position of a manager can handle 60 apartments. Since we have five, we don't need one person, but 1.1 of FTE. So as somebody part-time or maybe a person who is doing different things at the same time. So in this way, we have calculated all the people that we need. And so you can check here the assumptions we did for them. Now, the rest of the position, travel, marketing costs, other costs are calculated in a bit different manner. So let's have a look at the marketing costs. We simply look at the revenues and we have assumed that the marketing cost will be a certain percentage of sales. So for example, the marketing costs are equal to 2000 in the first year. And this is due to the fact that we have assumed that we're going to spend 2% on marketing since the revenue were roughly 100, then the marketing cost will be roughly 2000. Obviously, as our revenue grow, the marketing expenses grow. However, their relation to the sales stays the same. And this is how we have estimated travel costs, marketing costs, and obviously other costs. 
Brand for the head office is done in a, a little bit different way. So we look at the rent per square meters and we see the space we need. So we assume that actually till year five, we'll have no office and there, there will be just a small office, first 50 square meters and then 100 square meters. And finally, at the very top, you will find uh, an estimation on how many people you actually need to manage the business. This is done by number of people per position. So as you might remember, we have estimated that there is a required 0.1 manager in the first year. But then at the very end, when we have a lot of apartments, it will be actually two people required on this post. So at the very beginning, with hardly any apartments, we just need somebody part-time that is doing all these roles described here. But as the business gets more complicated, the team will be growing as well. So we will reach almost 10 people in year number 12. Now let's have a look at the loan and uh, later on we will finally be able to model the whole chain of apartments that we rent as Airbnb. Let's have a look at the estimation of the loan that will require for the Airbnb business model. So we estimate how much loan we have to take for new apartments. And this is estimated simply by looking at the number of new apartments that we will rent in a specific year and uh, the capex per one apartment that we have estimated in the sheet apartment. So for example, in year one, we want to have five new apartments added to our portfolio. And since one costs roughly 2,000, then we will have to spend roughly 10,000. Then in year five, we're going to be spending 20,000 because instead of five apartments, we will try to rent 10. And this is how we estimate the new loan that we require for the new apartments. In row 13, we model the repayment of the loan and we do it mainly by looking at the beta and assuming the certain percentage of the beta will go towards payment of the loan. So in the beginning, we don't pay anything as we have a negative beta and we start repaying the loans in year three and it grows up to year eight. Now, we have also altered the percentage of EBITDA that goes towards uh, the payment of the loan. So in the beginning, it's 5% and then it goes up to 10%. You also notice that we have a loan at the end of the year. And this is due to the fact that the repayment of the loan cannot be bigger than the loan at the end of the previous year. And this, for example, is very clear here in year 10, where we actually repay as much as we take a loan. So in a sense, we don't need the loan here because we are already generating so much cash that we were able to repay everything starting from year 10. In row 25, we've got interest paid, and this is calculated by looking at the loan at the beginning and at the end of the year, and the interest rate assume of 4%. There'll be also some interest received as we have a significant cash position, which reaches almost 3 million in year 12. And we applied a smaller interest rate of 1%. So that's in short when it comes to the loan. Now we will finally be able to go to the modeling of the whole chain of the apartments and see how the cash flow looks like. And actually, where did we get those 3 million from? So let's have a look at the total chain. So we start by looking at how many apartments we will be adding each and every year. So in the first year, we add just five, then 15. And starting from year three, we'll be adding 10 apartments every year. This means that in total, we'll have at the very end 120 apartments. In row 12, we estimate the revenues. They grow from 86,000 on five apartments to 3.4. 3.5 million on 120 apartments. As always, we do it by cohorts. So in row 13, we've got apartments that we have uh, rented in year one, then uh, in row 14, the apartments that we have rented in year two, and so on and so forth. The revenues we get by multiplying the revenue for a given year from the sheet apartment by the number of apartments that we have rented in a specific year. So this will be the results of what we have in year one. So 17,000 multiply by the number of apartments or apartments number five. And this is how we get the revenues. The revenues obviously are a sum of all the revenues that we got from apartments that we had in year one. So for example, in year five, we have apartments from year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. And in total, they generate 1.3 million in terms of revenues. In a very same manner, we have the beta. So we get the beta again from the apartment sheet. And we have here the analysis by cohort. So by groups of apartments rented in a specific year. 
So for example, in row 28, we've got apartments that we have rented in year number one. And then in row 34, we've got apartments that we have rented in year seven. As you will notice, you will have a zero till the year in which we have rented the apartments because previously we didn't have them, so we, we could not have any bit on them. So for example, when it comes to apartments from year seven, we start having a bit in year seven. We want to get to the EBITDA for the whole company, so we have to deduct from the EBITDA that we've got from apartments the cost of head office and this is what we do in row 45 so in row 46 we've got the beta from apartments and from that we deduct the cost of the head office as you can see we get a positive beta after head office costs already in year number three and it grows to almost 700,000 in year number 12. We also have estimated the percentage of beta. So at the beginning, obviously it's negative, and then it grows starting from year three, from 8% to 20% in year 12. In the next lecture, we're gonna discuss the cash flow we generate from the business, and we're gonna see how we are able to build our own wealth. So let's have a look at the cash flow for the whole company. So we start by looking at the operational and investment cash flow from the apartment. And as you can see, it is positive almost every year. In the beginning, it's a little bit negative, but then it grows to 1.1 million in year 12. This is a sum of the cash flows from apartments that we have rented in different years. Again, here we would have apartments rented in year number one, then in year number two, three, four, and so on and so forth. We get the data from the sheet apartment where we have modeled one apartment and we simply multiply it by the number of apartments that we have rented in a specific year. What you see here, it's just a sum of the cash flow generated by different groups of apartments. So this is how we get to the operational and investment cash flow from apartments. On top of that, we may have some investment in head office for time being, it is assumed to be zero. After that, we can move on to estimating financial cash flow. The financial cash flow will depend on, first of all, loan increase, interest paid on that loan, interest received because we will have some cash position, repayment of the loan. And finally, we have also taken into account that the owner may be forced to put some money into the company to keep it cash flow positive. And this is what we do actually here. So we assume that uh, the Paul, our friend, has to invest 200,000 in order for this business to start. Now we are able, on the basis of the things we have estimated so far, estimate the total cash flow. So we've got the operational and investment cash flow from apartments. From that, we deduct the cost of head office and the investments that we have to do in the head office. And finally, we add the financial cash flow. As you can see, we have a positive cash flow almost every year, apart from the year two, and we reach 650,000 in cash flow in year 12. Finally, thanks to that, we are able to estimate our cash position at the end of the year. So when it comes to the cash position, we're going to start with almost 200,000 in year one, and our cash position will grow almost to 3.6 million in year 12. So significant amount of money. There are no assets that we can evaluate here. However, thanks to renting and later on subletting 120 apartments in those 12 years, in terms of nominal value, we are able to generate 3.6 million of cash. So not bad, given especially that we have just to input 200,000. So this is the way you can model this sort of things. So just to sum up, we have started by modeling one apartment, then head office costs and loan. And on the basis of that, we were able to calculate the behavior of the whole chain. So what would be the revenues, a beta, but also the cash flow. Bear in mind that you have to do it by cohorts as we did it here for revenues, a beta, and the cash flow on the operational and investment level. So you have to separately model the behavior of apartments rented in a specific year due to differences that may occur when it comes to prices and also the loans so that's in short. If you have any questions regarding this case study, please let me know by posting them into the discussion field or email me directly in Udemy. So let's move to the next case study.